Welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. Time now for a feel good story. 17 year old Dejeri Bartley from Antigua and Barbuda, a shining example of how student athletes create the much needed balance between academics and sports. A budding footballer, Bartley has represented Antigua and Barbuda at the national level with their age group teams and has gotten invitations to train with the senior team. The son of former West Indies under 19 cricket captain Zoral Bartley. Dejeri also played cricket while attending Baptist Academy in Antigua and uh, he's currently attending Bede Senior School in England. He's our special guest on The Zone today. Welcome to The Zone, sir. Great to have you on the program. I know it's pretty late in England at the moment, but we were attracted to this store because of what we had seen, a store written in the Antigua Observer uh, some time ago. Um, first of all, Talk to us about how your academics are going. Let's start there, because we know that you sat 11 subjects in CSEC and got grade yeah, ones for most of them, including math and admath, which are, yes, for, for most people, um, uh, perilous Watch subjects. Out. Yeah. Um, how, how are yeah. the academics going before we start, start talking um, sport? So for my A-levels, I'm doing business, sports, and I'm doing football academy, but that doesn't count as a subject, of course. But I'm doing business, sports, and maths because, yeah, I enjoy the maths. Mm -hmm. And they've been going good so far. Uh, I had to catch up a bit, but I've caught up and now just moving on. Yeah, um, the audio is not as good as we want it to be. We hope it will clear up as we continue this chat. We know that Shea Hope had attended this school as well. We all know where he has advanced his, his, his cricket um, uh, career up to this point. Uh, do people still talk about Shea Hope at Beads? Um, actually, a lot. When when mentioning they're from the Caribbean, especially to the cricketers, they'll be like, oh, so you know Shea Hope? Shea Hope came here. I'm like, yeah, I know Shea Hope. And yeah, he's still talked about a lot. He has posters all around the school. He has his shirt from his debut. It's in the sports hall. Yeah, they love Shea Hope. Yeah, well, we know that you are more football than cricket. Did you play any yeah, cricket at I, all, though? Because I know your dad and, and your, your brothers, um, well, at least one of them, I think, played, played um, some cricket as well. But why, yeah, why, why football over cricket for you? Um, for me, I, I pick football over cricket because even though we're a cricket-based family, well, for my father, um, my oldest brother, Dario, he played for the under-15 national teams. He moved on to play for the under-16s, I think. Dejan, my other brother, he played for the under-14 national team, captained them, played for the under-15, he captained them, and he also played for the under-20 and captained them also. So, yeah, I just felt like football was what I needed to do as I'm a bit competitive, I couldn't think. I'd go on to play cricket, and they played football. I must be better than them. Yeah, I'd seen a story that suggested that initially you didn't really like school that much. And I got the impression reading the article yeah. that you liked school because it gave you the opportunity to play football and not so much for the academics. But you have excelled. Um, you have excelled in, in academics. How have you been able to achieve that balance? So the school I went to in Antigua, Baptist Academy, they weren't sports-based. We only sports we'd play is maybe at PE time or we'll have our inter-school competitions. We'll play a bit of football, basketball, whatever. But we weren't really sports-based. So they pushed us a lot to get our schoolwork done. And I think that helped me a lot with balancing football in school because the school would push me in my free time. I'd have to do my homework. So when I get to home, there's no work to do and I could just rest a bit and then go to practice and then maybe come back and get a bit of work done. So I think the school not being focused on football or not having any sports, any regular sports, I think, yeah, that pushed me a lot to get my school work done and balance my football with it. Yeah, well, I'm thinking, right, a day in my life is really hectic and I don't play any football or any cricket yeah. or anything like that. 
Um, so I'd love to know a day in your life because you have to train, you have to get this work done. And I know yep. how difficult um, ad mats and maths and everything can be. So what's a day in your life like now? And living in London because, come on, it's very cold right now. Yes, it's freezing actually. <laughs> but a day in my life, um, I wake up, I get dressed for school, I do everything to get dressed for school. Yeah, I get dressed for school. Then I go to school from around 8 to 1.30. Then activities would start from 2.15. So I'd play football from 2.15 to 4.15. That's, that's my only activity that I'm doing. And then I'll get back and I have prep time for an hour. Then I'll go off to dinner and I come back and I'm doing more prep. And then that would more or less be my night. Yep. So is that's the a day for me. Is the plan to be a professional footballer or to pursue the academic side of life? Because the truth is you have the option, right? Yeah. What are you leaning towards? My main goal is definitely to become a professional footballer. But, you know, you always have to have a plan B in case of injuries or anything. So I like to get into the business side of things also. Yeah, well, you sound like you come from my family because I remember, um, you know, my parents would always push whether you're supporting, sport, whether you're the number one footballer or cricketer or whatever, you still needed to yep. get your education. So now that Nothing you've like done, it. yeah, now that you've done it and you are excelling, anything you can say to the youngsters that are tuned into this show and they find it difficult to even just deal with school alone? I'd say to just continue pushing as you can't give anything but your best. So once you're giving your best and you know that you're giving your best and you believe in yourself and you have people around you that believe in you, you have to surround yourself with people that believe in you. That will help you to achieve your goals that you want to achieve. Yeah. Uh, quickly, can you outline for us briefly the differences in the school experience that you're having in, the, in England at the moment? as against what you've had previously in Antigua and Barbuda, both from an academic and uh, yeah. a sporting standpoint? So in Antigua, I do 11 subjects, as I did for my CSEC exams, yeah. So I'd have school from 8 to around 4.45 on a regular day. And, yeah, it would just be school work back to back to back to back. Now, up here in England, I have school from maybe 8 to 1.30 on a regular day. Well, 8.45 to 1.30 on a regular day. And there's sports built into that 8 to 8.45 to 1.30 day. I'll have football maybe for an hour. So, yeah, it's a lot different, but it's and I suspect, better for me, I suspect I the facilities are significantly better as well? Yes, they are, most definitely. I was actually appalled when I came off here. I was like, no way, this is what I've been missing out on. Mm -hmm. A couple of quick questions before we go, though, um, Dejari. Um, who is your favorite footballer internationally? Declan Rice. Declan Rice. Mm. Yeah. What, what about him that, that you embrace? Um, his work rate and just how aggressive he is to win the ball and how calm he is on the ball also. Mm. Should I ask you who your favorite team is? It should be a bit obvious, but definitely Arsenal, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and internationally, who is your favorite team? Um, I'd probably say England. Not the best, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. And I know you're a football, but from Antigua and Barbuda, who have produced so many outstanding international cricketers, who is your favorite um, Antigua and Barbuda international cricket? And don't say your dad, Zorl, because he played for the West Indies on the 19s? Well, you no, can if you not. want, but uh, let, let me hear your answer. No, I, I, would not, I would not give him that praise on you. Um, I'd say I love Hayden Walsh, yes. Hayden Walsh Jr. Wow. A wonderful fielder and a wonderful bowler also, yeah. Yeah, yeah. all right. Well, we just spoke about him on the show a few minutes ago. Uh, Dejeri, well, really, really great talking to you here. Um, congratulations yeah. from the Sports Mat Zone on the success that you've had up to this point in Thank your you. career. Uh, mixing your academics with your football talent. And we hope that you fulfill your dream of becoming an international uh, football star or professional football star. And uh, maybe 
uh, five years from now, we'll see you suiting up for Arsenal. <laughs> Hopefully. Thank yeah. you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> okay, that's Jerry Bartley from Antigua and Barbuda, now studying at the Bede School in England. That's the same school that Shea Hope had gone to uh, in his teenage years as well. And he's enjoying his time there in England. We wish him all the best and good to see someone from the Caribbean um, uh, flourishing. Uh, not only in their academics, but in sport as well. We go to break. We have more coming up on the Sports Mat Zone after this. <laughs>